Welcome to another episode of the 15 Minute a Day Cure. Today's topic, five habits that make your anxiety worse. This is actually episode five of the anxiety series. I will link episodes one through four in the description box below. Hi, I'm Margot Statton of Be Good to Yourself by Margot.com and welcome to my channel. Here, I teach you simple strategies to improve your quality of life. If you're new here, wonderful to have you. Let's jump into today's lesson. So five habits that make your anxiety worse. Um, if you stick around till the end of this video, I will actually have uh, an unconventional tip uh, to decrease your anxiety. So stick with me. Number one, procrastinating. Procrastinating. So, you know, anxiety is the feeling of being overwhelmed. It's kind of the inability to breathe. You know, anxiety could be environmental, it could be genetic, it could be situational, it could be phobia related. There are a lot of reasons for anxiety, but we've all have felt or feel anxious um, quite frequently, right? For some of us, it's a daily thing. For some of us, it's, you know, a weekly thing, a situational thing. The point is anxiety is always present. Um, we tend to procrastinate doing, you know, uh, not wanting to do things that sort of are too challenging or we think we're going to fail at or we don't enjoy doing. But by procrastinating, sort of the anxiety sits right here because at the end of the day, you know you have to get it done. The longer you wait to complete a task, the worse your anxiety gets. So my rule of thumb with all the clients that I work with is whatever you're procrastinating about, do that task first because it's still gonna be there, right? A week later, two weeks later, a month later, um, you're still gonna have to do it. So procrastinating actually just makes your um, anxiety much, 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 much worse. Number two, not setting boundaries. Um, you know, what makes anxiety worse is the feeling of being overwhelmed. Oftentimes, especially if we are people pleasers, if we're somebody that, you know, maybe we're responsible or let's say at work, you know, anytime our boss comes up to us and says, hey, you know, do you have time to complete an additional project? Whether it's because we want to help out our boss or please our boss or we're afraid to maybe get fired, we're kind of the yes person to go to, right? We're not setting boundaries. You know, when it comes to, for example, work especially, right? Because uh, work-life balance is a, it's a pretty big problem. A lot of folks don't have it. So if, for example, your boss sends you an email at 9 p.m. and you're answering it, right? And this email at 9 p.m., you should be already kind of winding down, getting ready for bed, you know, maybe taking a shower, relaxing, having some kind of self-care routine um, that kind of winds you down, de-stresses, you know, eliminates your anxiety or rather decreases it and gets you ready for the following day. Well, if you're answering those emails and now you're causing more stress and more anxiety to you. So not setting boundaries really makes anxiety worse. And, you know, setting boundaries is crucial for your work-life balance, um, but also for you as an individual. Because again, there's nothing worse for anxiety than, feelings, uh, than the feeling of being overwhelmed. Number three, you know, perfect segue not having work-life balance. Guys, I can't stress this enough. Work is work, home is home. Your happiest memories are not built at work. They are built at home with your families, your partners, you know, your kids, your pets, you know, our vacations, you know, our trips to the, you know, my daughter enjoys going to pumpkin picking or flower picking. Those are your happiest memories right? That, those are the things that you're going to remember when you're 70, when you're 80. It's not going to be, you know, staying up late to complete some work project, right? That's something that actually causes you anxiety and causes you stress. Not having work-life balance doesn't only make your anxiety worse. It makes your mental health worse. If you suffer from depression, it makes depression worse. It makes your chronic illnesses worse. It makes everything worse. Work is work. Life is life. If you work nine to five, you shouldn't be answering emails at 7 p.m. If you work Monday through Friday, you shouldn't be picking up calls or answering emails on a Saturday because what happens is you're always working. What happens when you're always working? You're going to burn out. And this indefinitely makes your anxiety worse. Um, number four, negative thinking. 
negative thinking is one of the biggest contributors to anxiety and stress specifically. Um, we tend to stress more about the negative things, right? Than we do about positive things, which is why, you know, I, a good tip, and this is something I practice daily is I end every single day reflecting on one positive thing that happened to me that day. And it could be anything, right? It doesn't have to be anything that's monumental, right? It doesn't have to be, I got a promotion or, you know, I won the lottery. It doesn't have to be anything grandiose. We need to retrain our minds and sort of our mindset to focus on the positive things in life uh, as opposed to the negative. And most frequently, we're thinking of negative things, you know, and not only that, we have the negative thoughts on repeat. What happens when you have negative thoughts on repeat, and we have all experienced this, your anxiety gets much, much worse. So you have to have, again, all of these are home type um, interventions. This is something that you can do and you can incorporate into your daily routines. These are essentially healthy habits. But negative thinking will only make your anxiety worse. And the best way is, again, read affirmations, reflect on positive things that happen to you out th throughout the day, practice gratitude, journaling, is a wonderful way to sort of eliminate some of the, or rather decrease some of the negative thoughts. By the way, if you're enjoying my content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. And finally, number five, not having a stress management routine. A lot of anxiety um, is born out of stress. And there are many things in life that cause us stress. Again, anxiety is rooted in many different things. I, you know, we're not talking about PTSD. We're not talking about OCD. Um, but a lot of our daily uh, general anxiety is because of improper stress management or rather a lack of even having a system for managing your stress. Um, I teach a class and every semester I ask my students, just to kind of tell me what their de-stressing techniques are on a daily basis. And to this day, I am shocked when 90% of my students tell me that they have absolutely zero system in place to reduce their stress. And the only time people begin to tackle their stress is if it's when it's manifesting itself in physical and mental health ailments. When it's gotten so bad to the point where you're experiencing aches and pains, that you're getting headaches, maybe you're experiencing vertigo. It doesn't have to and shouldn't have to get to that extreme level of stress and anxiety for us to have some type of intervention or do something to decrease it. Because if that's what's happening, you've taken it way too far. You should all have some type of de-stressing technique that you do on a daily basis. It, again, it doesn't have to be anything grandiose. It could be a bath that you take at the end of the day. It could be giving yourself half an hour, you know, every evening after you've put the kids to bed to read a book. It could be taking a walk. It could be sitting on a bench and, you know, looking at nature. It could be some kind of form of exercise. You have to have a de-stressing technique. Um, stress compounds, right? Stress doesn't naturally go away. Anxiety, same thing. It compounds. It doesn't necessarily go away. Anxiety builds upon anxiety. Stress builds more stress. If you're not doing anything to decrease this, it's only going to get worse. Um, and the best thing to do is prevention. If you have de-stressing techniques that you practice every single day, again, it could be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. If you have de-stressing techniques in place that you do seven days a week, your, your anxiety and your stress levels will naturally be much lower. We cannot eliminate all stress in life. We cannot eliminate ever have, you know, never having anxiety. It's, it's physically impossible. However, having de-stress techniques in place that you practice daily goes a long way to decreasing your stress and anxiety. So those are the five habits that make your anxiety worse. Uh, thank you for sticking around with me. I did mention that I have an unconventional bonus tip. Um, and here's the bonus tip. So if your anxiety is rooted in stress levels, uh, meaning stress home, stress work, regardless, um, there's been a lot of research that suggests that having sex will actually decrease your stress levels and thereby decreasing your anxiety levels. 
So that is my bonus tip. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, have a wonderful day and always remember to be good to yourselves.